Hello and welcome to another screencast of the screencast series dedicated to SQL Server 2008 programmability. This screencast is again dedicated to the ADO of an identity framework and more specifically on how we can use inheritance. This is the Magis Astemiu SQL Server MVP. Again, like in the previous screencast, we have to create a new project in Visual Studio 2008 and again I'm going to use Visual C Sharp along with .NET Framework 3.5. I'm going to create a Windows Forms application. I will name it Inheritance. And this is our workspace. Again, we have to create the entity data model. It's exactly the same way like we did in the previous screencast. I will again generate my uh, data model directly from the database from the PAPS database in SQL Server 2008. I have my connection ready. And again, I'm going, I'm going to use the authors table. Now we have our initial data model created automatically and the mappings, as you can see from the mapping details here, were performed automatically as well. Before proceeding with the uh, creation of uh, the inherited entity, let's go to SQL Server and see the contents uh, of the author's table. So now we see uh, the author's table and uh, you can note the type column uh, containing information uh, about the the journal uh, of the publications of the various authors. So we have SF for science fiction, CM, etc. Uh, authors having null in the publication type means that uh, they just uh, publish general purpose articles. Back to Visual Studio 2008. We have our author's entity and now we are just going to create a new entity. This entity will be named authors with type. The important thing here is that I'm going to declare the base type the author's entity this will automatically create a relationship between our new entity and the base entity, the authors. So you see the authors with type entity inherit from the authors entity. Now the next step is to cut the scalar property from the uh, authors entity and paste it here and this scalar property uh, is going to be used for setting up the relationship between uh, the two entities. So we go to the mapping editor and we say that for the authors with type entity, 
that is a mapping uh, with the author's entity on the scalar property named type and we also add a condition. The condition is that type is not null. The last step before saving our model and uh, building our project is to declare the author's entity as an abstract because we're, we are not going to directly use the author's entity but instead we're going to use the authors with type entity. Now we can save our model and build our solution. Similarly to the previous screencast, I'm going to create a new data source pointing to the authors with type entity. I drag drop the data source on the form and the data grid view was created automatically. Let's also enable the save button for being able to add some code after a while. And let's go to the uh, code editor. First, we have to declare the pubs entities model, that is our data model. And after the forms initialization, we can instantiate our data model object. Then we have to define the data source for the data grid view. So we navigate through our model to the author's entity and then we say of type authors with type. So what does the pub line of code do? Well, as you can see, we first have to specify our model object, that is the uh, model object we created earlier. Then we navigate to the author's entity, but because the author's entity is uh, an abstract entity, we can say through the author's entity, find the other entity that uh, it's derived by the first one and get uh, its content. Before running our application, let's also add some handling code when clicking on the save button. This is our event handler. And with model save changes, 
we allow our application to post any changes through the data model onto the database on SIGWA Server 2008. Let's build our solution and run it. As you can see, we only have the authors having a specific type. All the authors that uh, they have uh, null as a type, they are not displayed here. Let's double check with uh, running a similar query in SQL Server, where type is not null. You see, we have the same result set. Again, we can change this test tool, let's say, click on save, close our application, run it again, and you can see that our data modification was posted on the database. Thank you for watching this screencast. This demo was a simple approach towards using inheritance in the ADO.NET NG framework. Make sure you check back soon for newer screencasts featuring even more complex data applications using the ADO.NET NG framework.